if you know there's broad bipartisan agreement that foreign money and, and these kinds of things should be you know cracked down on who is behind this what force is behind this you take a situation where you have like a foreign billionaire who's not legally allowed to contribute to elections but his money gets funneled through a bunch of different passer groups till it ends up doing all these political activities well, everybody needs to be held accountable for to make sure that we're keeping foreign money out of elections and we're not having you know mass fraud occur online to influence elections so we, i haven't heard that name many people haven't heard how do you pronounce his name the swiss billionaire hans jorg wies Hello, everyone. This is James O'Keefe with OMG. We have a special edition of the OMG podcast here today with senior writer at Real Clear Investigation, an affiliate of Real Clear Politics, Mark Hemingway, who did an article, um, uh, The Progressive Benefactor Who Makes U.S. Barriers to Foreign Cash Look Like Swiss Cheese. Hello, Mark Hemingway. <laughs> Hello. How are you doing? Good. Um, now, what, what, why this interests us at OMG and our citizen journalists is we did a story on Act Blue back in uh, March, which seemed to show money being laundered through the addresses of these innocent people who had no idea they were making hundreds of thousands of dollars of contributions through Act Blue. They may have made a couple contributions, but not that much money. And we looked into it further and found CVV numbers. Uh, missing from the Act Blue website. So you've written this article. Why don't you just tell us about what you're reporting on here? You mentioned a European billionaire uh, and how they're able to pump hundreds of millions of dollars into American politics. Just give us a broad overview of your reporting. Well, sure. Yeah. I mean, this this really goes back, you know, 10 years or more to, you know, the Citizens United decision, which was a you know controversial Supreme Court decision that ruled that, uh, you know, the First Amendment made it so that we couldn't impose all these strict limits on campaign finance. And it's interesting because at the time, Democrats screamed bloody murder about this and how this is going to, you know, cause all these problems about, you know, problematic money and foreign money and other things flooding into our elections. And it does seem like in a lot of key ways, Democrats have in 10 years later become the, the chief offenders of doing all these things that they were warning about. Um, chief among that is uh, there's a Swiss billionaire named Hans Jörg Wies, who has been giving hundreds of millions of dollars uh, into these new 501c4 entities that were made possible by the Citizens United decision, where basically you have these umbrella organizations that you know, they're nonprofit entities that funnel money from one uh, nonprofit entity to these subsidiary organizations. And eventually you take a situation where you have like a foreign billionaire who shouldn't, who's not legally allowed to contribute to elections, but his money gets funneled through a bunch of different passer groups till it ends up doing all these political activities that it should be expressly forbidden by law. But it's all very murky. It's a lot of these donors are, 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 are not public information, and it's very hard to suss out what's going on. So we, I haven't heard that name. Many people haven't heard. It. How do you pronounce his name? The Swiss billionaire? Hans Jörg Wies, W Y S S. People talk about um, George Soros all the time. It's almost become a cliche. Um, is this guy has this been reported on before, or how do we know about him? Uh, yeah, this is actually kind of, you know, fascinating. Uh, one of the reasons why we do know about him is that uh, he's been contributing like hundreds of millions of dollars to democratic and progressive causes. I mean, his sister wrote his his bio his, his own sister wrote a biography and then said in the biography that he specifically wants to remake the the American Constitution uh, um, into something you know that that resent that that specifically pushes progressive values. I mean, he's been very open and public about his behavior. He even admitted to giving uh, you know six figures worth of illegal donations in the 1990s. Um, it just that the statute of limitations had passed by the time he was public about all of this and. It was never enforced. Um, and so he's in an unusual situation where he's been very, very public about his intentions and the amount of money that he's been giving. Uh, and it's also been interesting in that because of this issue where Democrats have been giant hypocrites, um, there still are some sort of diehard liberals that are very much against uh, the changes to campaign finance reform uh, in the media and out. So Ken Vogel at the New York Times and uh, and someone at the Associated Press have all done big reports on this guy that have been rather pointed and uh, about uh, whether or not what he's doing to give hundreds of millions of dollars to progressive causes is something that Democrats should be doing. Well, what proof do we have that, I mean, 
this this is this is the story. People are very intrigued by this Act Blue, the data on the FEC website. I mean, in your opinion or in your view, based on your reporting, is it is it a buggy glitch? Is it that people overseas in in China and Europe are 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 able to? I mean, who is behind this? What force is behind this? <laughs> Well, that's a really good question because, you know, again, uh, under the rules of these 501c4 groups, uh, you know, they can keep their donors private. Um, so we don't really know what's going on. It's just that, like with this one exception with this Hans Jörg Wies guy, we know that there are foreign, uh, the, this one foreign billionaire is, is giving hundreds of millions of dollars. There was a huge scandal in the 1990s involving the Clintons where uh, Chinese people with uh, um, ties to the Chinese government were, were funding, funneling huge amounts of money into democratic politics. So we know there are all kinds of foreign influence operations. I mean, there was a foreign influence operation involving a, a, a Jeb Bush super PAC some years ago. Um, so we know that this is happening. Um, the question is, is what are American groups doing to filter um, any of this out? Now, in the case of Act Blue, you know, this is a, a different sort of situation where you're not necessarily dealing with big donors. You're dealing with small donors that are, you know, uh, going to the Internet to donate often small amounts of cash. But uh, Act Blue is isn't doing basic security verification, um, like using that three digit CVV number credit card verification value number that um, popped up on credit cards in the last, you know, however many years as an additional security uh, measure. Um, you know, uh, sure, that is information that can be hacked like any other credit card information. But by and large, you know, it's, it's one layer of extra protection that they added for a reason. And it, it generally provides some sort of assurance that whoever is entering the CVV number has, um, you know, the, the, the card that they're using in their control. Um, and so, uh, there would be no way to really tell uh, unless, you know, there's some sort of like serious auditing going on that there wasn't coordinated foreign influence operations that were donating significant amounts of money through, you know, small donations that are hard to trace through an online portal like Act Blue that is that is that is doing this. Um, and it's really astonishing because Act Blue is really, you know, often on its own here. I mean, you can you can't do almost any commerce transaction on the internet anymore without providing that CVV number. Yet Act Blue doesn't require it. The only reason they would require they would not require that CVV number would be that they are trying to maximize the donations and they do not care whatsoever whether or not there is fraud involved or whether or not they're they're enabling foreign influence operations. Have you been able to get in touch with anyone from Act Blue for comment? No, obviously, I reached out to them for comment for my story, but I, I didn't hear back. I mean, obviously, these progressive groups are, are loath to even talk about what they're doing, because like I said, there's no way to publicly defend not doing that. <laughs> and, and you know, not that I'm an expert in how to commit this fraud, but I mean, how does it work? Because these innocent people we talk to, we talk to people in Maryland, we, we knocked on their doors yeah. and they, they said, I did not donate this many times. No, they were Democrats. So how would a fraudster overseas actually do this in your in your view? Well, you know, you can buy, you know, social security numbers, credit card information, um, you know, for, for next to nothing on the on the dark web. I mean, there are probably vast troves of this stuff that are for sale um, that, you know, I don't know how to do it either. But, you know, when I've done previous reporting on uh, social security fraud and, uh, you know, that information is widely available on the dark net for shockingly little amounts of money. So if you were, say, you know, Russian intelligence or Chinese intelligence or something and you wanted to, you know, exert influence on a particular election, the idea that you could you know, go into a key election and funnel a few hundred thousand dollars here and there using small amounts of stolen credit card information that people would, you know, hardly notice. And a thing like Act Blue, you could donate five dollars here and there or whatever with, you know, a few thousand people or whatever and have a significant impact on a smaller election um, without, you know, and it would be very hard to trace it all back to a single source. What's remarkable is how prevalent this is happening. We looked into the uh, Peter uh, Peters group in Wisconsin, uh, Citizen Watch group, this is this is not just a few a few times. These are hundreds of they call them Smurfs. I think Smurf is too villainous a term because I think they're more like victims. Yes. Uh, than, than culprits. Someone's using their social security number or their name. I mean, this is this is a very big deal because it's not just a few people. This is a lot of money, and it's this is a big. You, you mentioned Marco Rubio's is is draft legislation. You you there's a hyperlink in your article to a Fox News. Uh, post that mentions James O'Keefe and O'Keefe Media Group. Um, this is a big story. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so people told me this is the biggest story that I've ever been involved in. 
like what's the next shoe to drop or the next thing that needs to happen to uncover what might be behind the culprit? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, congressional investigations would certainly be helpful. I mean, obviously, a lot more law enforcement attention would be, you know, helpful as well. The problem is, is that this gets politically loaded fast. If you start exposing, for instance, that Democrats are far worse on this stuff, then there's gonna be a lot of political pressure or whatever to shut it down. Um, you know, as you mentioned, you know, I think your reporting uh, um, at O'Keefe Media Group um, you know, directly contributed to Marco Rubio's, you know, continued push for requiring d Democrats to include CVB numbers for political donations and other things like that. And like, that's a real simple thing to do. You know, is it going to solve the problem? No, but will it crack down on, on the fraud significantly? It probably will. And yet Marco Rubio, you know, even though he's attracted support from some Democrats in Congress uh, for his, uh, his uh, um, you know, measure requiring CVB numbers, uh, he wasn't even able to, you know, get it uh, attached to uh, legislation that got voted down out of committee or whatever when he tried to include it as an amendment on, on legislation recently. I, I go through this in the article a bit. I mean, it's just shocking to me that something so simple. And by the way, if you know, there's broad bipartisan agreement um, that, you know, uh, that foreign money and, and these kinds of things should be, you know, cracked down on. Uh, in elections. And, and not only that, even on the Democratic side of things, you know, I talked to uh, um, a couple of, you know, progressive groups that are, you know, working on clean election stuff, and they're horrified by this. And I believe they're sincerely committed to wanting to get it out of politics. I mean, um, at the local level in Minnesota, they passed legislation to keep it out of, you know, um, uh, state politics. Um, they, they've done other things in cities that are similar. I mean, Democrats want this. It's just that the national Democrats, uh, you know, that uh, uh, raise billions of dollars uh, for Democratic congressional elections, they're the ones that are really, I think, driving this. Trend. I'd be interested to see what they're, you know, what Act Blue would actually say if they were talking about this, I, they're not going to talk to you or talk to me, but it strikes me that it's just the data is clear. You either, there's clear, it's either some type of, uh, you know, technical anomaly, or I thought maybe a bug. I, I, I've been trying to understand in terms of bipartisanship, we at OMG have an upcoming story involving an individual in New Jersey um, name Alexandra Gina on the FEC website. Again, the FEC website shows that she's donated 16,000 times over three years, which is impossible. Our understanding is WinRed does require a CVB. I have to check that, but I'm assuming they do. Um, your, your comment on that, or how, how is that possible? Have you seen anything like that on the right? Well, there have been some examples of, you know, the right getting involved in this. There was, like I think I mentioned in passing earlier, that there was this issue where there was a Chinese influence operation that was involved with a Jeb Bush super PAC um, when he was running for president. Um, so, you know, these things do happen. And I think anytime you have an online portal for small donations, like when Red does, you're going to see people go in there and try and mess with that and play games with it. It's just a question of whether or not when Red is doing enough to stop this from happening, um, you know, are they putting the security measures in place? Well, I know for a fact they have one more security measure in place than, say, Act Blue does. Does that mean they're doing enough? No, um, but you know, I, I I wouldn't for a second pretend that Republicans uh, are above being exposed to this fraud or, or you know even even enabling it. But it's just clear across the board that we're not doing enough, and you know everybody needs to be held accountable for to make sure that. We're keeping foreign money out of elections and we're not having you know mass fraud occur online to influence elections it seems like we do need some type of insider in act blue i know i think they're in massachusetts uh, they're located i believe there but um um that we talked about legislative changes safeguards um and going back to this this swiss billionaire um are there any other names that you know of or any other sources uh, overseas, you mentioned Russia and China. Any any other reporting that you that you've done on that to, to identify anyone else beyond uh, beyond the Swiss billionaire? Uh, no, I, I I haven't identified anyone beyond the Swiss billionaire. Like I said, the uh, part, a big part of the problem here is we don't know what we don't know. I mean, the the donors, especially large donors, the political causes and these these nonprofit groups that were created by the Citizens United decision essentially. They're allowed to keep these names private. And on one hand, I kind of understand that when you look at how much is going on to, you know, target and harass people, even for just, you know, speaking up for the, the smallest political causes, you're going to understand why someone who does who's giving millions of dollars would want to keep their name, you know, quiet. Um, 
it's just that that also enables you know a lot of you know crazy and fraudulent things to happen as well i mean hans jörg wies is a really interesting unique guy and that he's been so very public about what he's doing um to be clear you know I, as i say in the article he says that he gets specific insurances that his uh, uh money isn't being used for political or illegal causes but i mean absolutely no one believes that um you know and i don't think he believes that necessarily either but you know he's at least going through the motions it might but, not you know, be him instructing this it might be some offshoot group that he's giving the money to who's doing this dirty deed correct mm -hmm. yes you um, know once he gives the money it does, he doesn't control it from that point on what can you know we're a citizen journalism organization and i think a lot of people want to do something you know this is a, this story matters to a lot of people and as a journalist yourself, what advice do you have to the American citizens that are watching this saying, I want to go expose this? What can ordinary Americans do to help expose something like this? Well, um, that's a that's a really good question. I mean, I, I think obviously, you know, even something as simple as just, you know, going, you know, to these, you know, going to the FEC website or whatever that has these disclosures once in a while and checking to see if anyone's made any political donations in your name might be one good way to go about it. Another thing is like, like I mentioned, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, sincere Democrats and progressives um, that uh, are very against this stuff. Um, and so, you know, this is an issue where putting pressure on your, your local congressmen uh, or and senators might have more impact uh, than uh, a lot of other polarized issues. I mean, I think this is an issue where even a small amount of grassroots pressure would cause a lot of people in Congress and the Senate to sort of, you know, get on board. Um, the problem is, is just that the Democrats, you know, seem to control the media and they're keeping a lot of this sub rosa so that it, it, it was because they're raising billions of dollars nationally for Democrats. It's almost like they're, even if I do this story on Wind Red, their hatred of, of of um if what you're saying is true that this is more prevalent like with act blue than when red and I, I that's what i've seen then whatever marginal concern they might have for stopping the fraud on one side is offset by like you're saying all this 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 revenue from the other side well um interesting update with the swiss billionaire i've never heard that name before so maybe i maybe i just haven't been paying attention but i think a lot of people haven't heard that name and thank you for for uh, bringing this issue to the attention is there anything else you'd like to comment on it no i just thank you for having me on the podcast and, and i and i just want to say that you know i genuinely appreciate the efforts that you guys do um you know you guys have asked a lot of awkward questions of a lot of the right people and I, there aren't nearly as enough journalists out there doing that sort of thing stay tuned and i'll, I'll send you this win red story when it goes public and thank you for being on appreciate it i appreciate it, it.